I'll be staggered if something substantial, what most people would refer to as a black swan, I will be massively surprised. In fact, I would make a fifty to hundred thousand dollar bet that sometime between now and August, there is some event that we like, wow, a COVID nineteen nine eleven type event. I do own silver. Uh, I like silver better than gold, quite frankly. I have ammo, I have guns, I have water, I have food, I live on the Gulf so I can fish if I need to. My family, I have done my job as an alpha male to protect my family. Now my job is, can I protect their future, their ability to buy and to survive in an economy that's pretty weird. If we're looking at Bitcoin in the scenario where you're thinking we could have a major global conflict and we could even have a cyber attack and hence you've got your gold and silver and guns and access to food and fishing and water. In, in that doomsday apocalypse scenario, why is Bitcoin where you want to be? Especially if, if you're saying a cyber attack is a potential for 2024 and beyond. I mean, surely in that scenario, and again, there's another scenario where I think Bitcoin is, is the way to go, but let's st start off with this scenario. Why is Bitcoin where you see a safe haven? As a, especially as opposed to gold, for example. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to carry two million dollars worth of gold around, but it's it's uh, complex. It's very heavy. In, in fact, uh, I have seven hundred thousand dollars worth of silver in a vault over there, and it literally takes up the entire vault. Okay, but it's only seven hundred grand. I couldn't possibly carry all that silver with me. I can't even get on on a plane with anywhere near that much silver. So. The transportability of silver, I mean, I've done some new, some business with Kitco before. I bought all my silver and gold from Kitco, but sending it back it is, you know, it's problematic. So that for me is a liquidity problem. It's not that gold is not liquid. It's me getting it to the point where it can be liquid. But in, in a cyber attack scenario, Gary, is okay, Bitcoin? Yeah. You know, I could have bought Bitcoin at, at uh, $300. And for two years, I didn't because I, I did this. Hey, what if the power goes out? Well, guess what? If the power goes up, you're not going to use your Visa card, your MasterCard, your American Express card, your wireless transactions, Venmo, Ripple. You're not using any of that. That's going down too. You're not going to do wire transfers. You're not going to do ACH. Nothing is going to work. So that's a Mad Max world, right? That's really a scary world. And this is where I disagree with the Bitcoin maxis. I don't, I don't want this much adoption of Bitcoin, okay? The, the adoption of Bitcoin where it becomes the standard tomorrow morning means we are a Mad Max. I not, I'm not a supporter of that. I don't want to hold 500 to 1,000 Bitcoin and go, hey, look at me, man. I got a lot of Bitcoin, but we're all miserable. That is not a good outcome for us. We have, Bitcoin's not going to solve the psychosis of, of our leaders. I mean, our leaders have gone over the top to, to really... I think create more damage than they are uh, a good. So, um, so I'm a big believer in, hey, let's, let's hire some non-professional politicians and just give them a chance. I don't think they can screw it up any worse.